All right, I'm adding to my nature journal. In the page so far. It's the last one I did. So today I'm going to do a little scene of um, my mesquite, which I have several plants growing out, growing up the mesquite all together, all crazy. So I'm going to paint that. Do it, going to do it pretty quick. I'm going to use acrylic wash. As my palette usually I have black and white. And this one I'm just going to use these to start out with for all the underpainting. Yellow ochre, sepia, and green. So. And the white, I usually... It's the only color I put a stripe down instead of a blob. And the reason is uh, during the painting I want to sample as the paint gets contaminated, I like to sample different parts of the white so I can get a pure white. So, put some black. Don't need too much black. Okay, sepia. Yellow ochre. And green. Okay. Just a little bit of drawing here to indicate the trees. So I've got a mesquite tree here. Just coming through. Several branches. <clears throat> and then all these plants coming up. All right. For these, I don't really need a detailed drawing. So, start with a bigger brush. This is going to be mostly sepia for these trunks of these trees here. So this is just sepia and white. Okay, there's a tree. Now, <clears throat> a bunch of plants coming out of that tree. So once again, this is just sepia and green, touch of white. So yeah, I was out there the other morning and uh, 
all these vines are growing up this tree and the morning light was hitting it just right it's kind of a spotlight effect so I took a picture I wanted to stay out there and paint it but the mosquitoes are horrible right now hopefully they'll be gone pretty soon A little bit of ochre in here. A little bit of white. Let's see. Yeah. Gonna go into the next page here too, because I'm gonna paint some uh, some close-ups of some of these flowers on here. That's all I need for that brush. Step down to this brush here. It's a little small, a little pointier, so I can get some more, a uh, little bit more detail. So I'm mixing in white and yellow ochre into that. Oh, and now I'm getting paint on my hand, so I guess I better paint up higher. Okay, this is a little too diluted. Needed to needed to be a little more opaque. So this is right where the light's catching it in here. So there's these are actually three vines kind of intertwining here. Uh, this one here is a uh, virgin bower. I'll be painting a little bit more of a close up of that one. And then there's also queen's wreath, which makes these big heart shaped leaves. Like this here. are going up more into the shadowy area here so getting a little darker
So a little bit lighter leaves here. Okay, I've kind of got that established. I think I'll go in and put some darks in. Wash this out a little bit. So I'm gonna darken some of this, um, the tree in here. So right now I'm using almost straight uh, sepia. It's it pretty dark and it's also very warm. So, and I found the, the key to making these kind of paintings work is the warm, cool relationship. So, in this, in the shadows here, and, and in most shadows, um, it, they're warm. Shadows are generally warm. The only time they're not warm is uh, if, the, if the light hitting them is especially warm, like at sunrise or sunset, or during a dust storm or something. Uh, then the, uh, the light hitting them is very warm, but usually the light, especially in Tucson, is pretty cool. some of these shadows going down here so the light is back this way so it's coming down put some shadows in some of these leaves here This is a really fast painting. Much more impressionistic than realistic. Put some of these cast shadows coming out here. So this acrylic gouache, one thing I like about it is that the colors from wet to dry don't change a whole lot, but you know, this sepia does. It's one of the ones it does. The really dark ones and the really light ones kind of change a little bit. They claim there's no color shift, but there is a little bit. but it's actually the least amount of color shift of any paint I've used. So one of the reasons I like them. So darkening in these shadows here. Put a few down in here. Okay, let's get some warm greens. So the shadowy greens, which I'm doing now, are uh, warmer. 
So basically what I did is mix the same green color with uh, a little bit of sepia to warm them up. So. Warmer greens in the shadows. So really this is just sepia and, oh, got a little bit of yellow in that, didn't mean to, but doesn't matter. about two things I mean it's of course it's the subject matter which is uh, vines climbing up a tree but really it's about light and it's about color temperature <clears throat> and values if you get the values right everything else works One of my teachers used to always say, value does all the work and color gets all the credit. And I have found that to be very true. If you get the values right, <clears throat> uh, you can, you got a lot of wiggle room with everything else. shadows and then we're gonna go <clears throat> into some of the highlight areas in the shadows. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. All right. I'm gonna go down one size to number eight round start putting in some of the smaller little leaf details so this is just green <coughs> yellow ochre, and a little bit of white.
So I'll put some of these smaller leaves throughout here. And put a little bit more yellow in these and a little more white. Start doing some of the other leaves hitting more in the light. So I'm not doing my lightest lights yet. These are sort of the mid-tone lights. Start putting in some of these uh, leaves here of the queen's wreath. So they have these beautiful heart-shaped leaves. They're pretty big. So this is just yellow ochre, green, and white. You can see how the The leaves are already kind of popping a little bit. All right, I'm going to switch gears one more time. Go to a number four brush. So we're getting smaller and smaller details on these leaves. So the shapes of these are kind of critical. And the cool thing is with uh, painting these landscapes is you don't have to paint every single leaf. You just gotta get a few that are in the focal point. And then the other leaves kind of fall into place. So some of these are pretty good sized leaves here. Put some of these other ones in here too. So some of these that are catching the light right here really kind of start giving the painting some dimensionality. And a 
few of these other smaller leaves are catching the light here. Hopefully next one I can paint outside. It's so much better painting from nature than from a photo because photos always shift values and colors. Only rarely do you get a photo that really captures the, the true color of a scene and the true values. Cameras are getting better, but they are not like the human eye. We're just adding a little bit of details to these leaves here and it really starts pulling things together. some more of these bigger leaves down through here. I think I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine blue because a few of these leaves are a little cooler. <clears throat> Especially I'm going to start painting in some of the um, passion flower leaves and they have a little bit more of a bluer cast to them. So when I'm using blues I like to use ultramarine because it's not really strong. <clears throat> like if you try to use like phthalo blue or something, it like takes over your whole palette. But uh, ultramarine blue is, is kind of a subtle blue and uh, it will usually not overpower your colors. So here I'm mixing it with green. Oh, I think that's too much. Maybe a little bit of sepia. Oh, my sepia is all dried up. Put some more here. These are acrylic wash. It's basically acrylic. It dries pretty quick, especially in Tucson, where I'm at. Let's see how this looks. Eh, I think that's about right. So these are. A little more in the shadows here and so they're in the shadows but they're getting s some light from the sky so but it's a little bit of kind of a bluer light maybe too blue but the cool thing about these paints but you can change them and it's one of the reasons I don't work in watercolor because in watercolor you got to know exactly what you're doing every second and I don't 
because uh, relationships change as you put colors down and uh, by relationships I mean uh, value relationships and color relationships they sort of uh, evolve as you're doing the painting so that's why I like these paints because I can always come in and make adjustments afterwards if I put something in a certain color that seems to change the other colors just because of simultaneous simultaneous contrast or something like that I can come in and change stuff and the cool thing about this acrylic wash which, which is basically acrylic is that you can paint right over it if uh, something changes or if you mess up uh, you can come right in afterwards and start changing things So I may got, have gotten these a little bit too blue. We'll see. All right, but while I've got the blue here, I'm gonna go in and do some of those passion flower leaves. So these are the passion flower. So these have some stronger shadows on them here. Cast from these other leaves above them. So these are basically cooler, warm colors. Which sounds kind of like a contradiction, but uh, just gives it a little bit richer kind of a palette in the painting, and much more naturalistic because nature. There's a lot of colors out there. So these are some of the passion flower leaves. <clears throat> Let's run some of these cool shadows here. If you watch me painting, you notice I use my fingers a lot, to, especially to dab colors in sometimes and mix stuff in. Kind of a cool little blue here, so I'm just putting some shadows in here and there. This is basically sepia and ultramarine. So there, that's kind of working, especially on this tree trunk here. Pulling it down. Let's 
It's uh, getting some deeper shadows in here. Just a little bit here and there. Put some darker shadows in through here. Especially down in here. So you see these just so this is ultramarine blue and sepia. And it seems to really be pulling this uh, shadows back. So, I mean, in a, a painting, you just have two dimensions. <laughs> this is a two dimensional surface, but if you use values and color temperature the right way, you can sort of get a, a depth to the paintings. And you're sort of tricking the eye. But it's a cool effect, and artists that can pull it off, it's, it's kind of amazing. So that's what I've been working on, getting that. And it really has to do with two things, value and color temperature. So putting in these cooler warms. And there's some like cast shadows and Some more shadows back in here. They're pretty sh deep shadows in this area here. Okay, just kind of wrapping up the shadow part here. And then I'll go in <clears throat> with some more uh, highlights. And that's probably going to be about the end of this. Let's see, put a few little shadows here and there. So these are, these shadows here, even though it's got blue in it, they're pretty warm shadows. So now for contrast, we'll put in a, some cool highlights and that'll make it pop. All right, 
that's enough of those. Now, <coughs> let's see, I'm gonna get this same kind of color ratio here, the CPN blue, and just put white in it. And remember, white, although it's a value, it's gonna lighten things, it also cools things. Whenever you add white, you're cooling something down, so. Let's see, I think that's a little too blue. So I'm putting in these highlights of the, the mesquite. Okay, a little more white and a little more sepia, I think. Yeah. white and sepia is the, the right color combination. Just warm it up just a little bit. Put a little bit of this yellow ochre in. See what that does. It's just catching where the where the light's hitting the tree here. too much of that okay now I'm gonna go in with my lighter colors here or lighter values and I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow to the to the palette so this will make some of these uh, leaves really pop and you know basic color theory is that warm colors come towards you, cool colors recede from you. So we're gonna get make some warm leaves here and they're gonna really come forward. That's what kind of starts giving it a little more, bit more of a 3D effect. So I just hit it right where the light's catching it there. Maybe just a little bit right in here. The light's catching these leaves. This is, oops, I don't want blue, I want green, and this yellow and white. Yeah, then we're gonna go through here and put some of these other little leaves that are catching the light here.
Just catching some of these leaves here with the light. You see how just adding a little bit of that yellow there really made these leaves pop forward through here. Feel these little stems and vines coming down here. some of these down a little. Sometimes you add little pops of white in there like pointils really gives it a sort of a livelier appearance. That's what Vermeer used to do. Pointils gives it a little sparkle. And then also there are some virgin bower flowers in here that are white. So I'm going to indicate them. And I'm going to do a close-up of them probably on the next page. So little areas of white in here. And then we'll do a few areas of uh, just where the leaves are catching the light here and there. And maybe there's a few dead leaves in here. Maybe put a little bit of yellow. Just pure yellow. Then to tone that yellow down a little bit, it could put a little bit of ochre. Have that in here. Maybe indicate a few of these little stems that are kind of weaving around. All right, just about done. I think I'll just put a few hard highlights in on some of these leaves. And I think that'll be about it. So this is a, a white. But not pure. As you see, I mixed a little bit of green and yellow in it. So it's just where these are catching the light here.
So this is just the final little highlight. It's usually my last pass is highlights. It's for the icing on the cake. <clears throat> Okay, I think that's about done. I think it captured what I wanted to capture it was just this this feel here of the uh, the tree and all these vines growing up it. So we've got um, the uh, queen's wreath coming down and through. We've got um, the virgin bower. Can't really see the leaves on these at this deep level of detail. And uh, I've got passion flower vines coming up through there, all through the mesquite. So I think that pretty much captured it in a nutshell. So probably this next page here, I will do a close up of the virgin bower.